Hi, welcome to this video about dynamical heat transfer. My name is Karl Eric Hagentoft. I work at the Chalmers University of Technology in Gothenburg, Sweden. This picture shows uh, the problem we are looking at. It's a body that stores heat and it's thermally insulated in the surroundings. So the red area symbolizes the solid or the fluid body and which has a volume V, a mass M, an exposed area A, density rho, C is the heat capacity and the starting temperature. And we'll assume that the temperature is uniform within this body. And we would like to uh, estimate or calculate the, the temperature, how it changed in time. Uh, the yellow area uh, symbolizes the thermal insulated wall with the thickness D and the thermal conductivity, lambda, is all. And the surrounding temperature is Te. And this diagram shows how the temperature is changing in time. And at time zero, we have T start. And in beginning, we have big temperature difference between the body and the surroundings. So we can expect uh, quite big temperature difference during a certain time. While it will diminish a bit when the time is, is increasing and the temperature difference between the body and the surrounding is, is not so big anymore. And soon, after some time, uh, the temperatures will go down to the, the uh, ambient temperature. Let's put into formulas. Uh, P here symbolizes the heat loss from the body. And it is de determined by the temperature difference, the lambda value, the thickness of insulation, the exposed area. And during a small time interval, dt, we lose a certain amount of, of heat, energy and that is coupled to the heat capacity and the change in the temperature D, capital T. And we put these together um, in the equation here um, and change the order a bit of the terms. We get this term in front of the temperature part here, temperature difference. And from a di dimension analysis, we can see directly that T here and T there has the same dimension and so we got to have T here in the denominator. So we, we define a time scale TC, which is given by this expression here. And uh, that will give a time scale of the problem. If we are solving the ordinary differential equation we saw on the last slide, uh, we get this solution. So it's an exponential decay starting at the ta start temperature and slowly but surely the temperature is reaching the, the surrounding body, the surrounding temperature. And to understand how long things are taking and, and couple it to this characteristic time, uh, so if we have E exponential up to minus one here, which is roughly 0.37, we can see that 63% of the temperature has been reached at this characteristic time. And there's still 37% left of the total temperature drop at this time. Let's look at an example. Let's say we have a freezer that stops working. It starts, we have a temperature of minus 20 degrees when it happens. The freezer has a shape of the shoebox, half a meter times two times one meter. We have the five centimeters of insulation with the thermal conductivity 0.3. And we have 20 kilogram of ice inside the box and the surrounding temperature 20 degree. If we look at the heat capacity for ice and for water, they're different. It's the highest values for water. And since we also are reaching the melting of the ice, since the surrounding temperature is above zero degree C, we also have to look at the latent heat, which is uh, given here also. So the characteristic time during when we have ice, it's 2.9 hours, and when we have water, it is 5.54 hours. And during the time the ice is melting, the temperature difference is constant 20 degrees, so we can write down an equation easily, how long time it takes to melt, so the effect, which is constant during this time, times the time is equal to the change in the latent heat, which is m times L here in, in the formula. And that is actually uh, 22.1 hours. To distribution over the whole time, 
and we see in the beginning we start from minus 20 when the ice start to warm up and it's quite a big temperature difference to the ambient temperature and it rises up to zero degree when the ice start to, to melt and it takes 22 hours and then after 22 hours the temperatures get above zero degrees and after a few hours reaches reaches the ambient temperature 20 degrees we'll also look at the propagation of heat into a thick wall we have a step change in the surface temperature so at time zero we have a sudden increase in the temperature with the amount of t-step uh, the thermal properties of the solid is important and we have the thermal conductivity lambda the heat capacity in the density is important as well here we see an animation how how the temperature and the heat is is moving into the object after half an hour one hour two hours four hours eight hours 16 hours we see now it's reaching further into the material into the solid and this problem has actually an, 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 a solution as well it's written down here so we have a special function function called the error function rfc complementary error function and we don't have to know so much about it at the moment but it's, it's it has these values from zero young to the infinity so the error functions value complementary error function values is between zero and one and we see that the argument here inside the function s is equal to the depth in the solid and divided by square root of 4 a t and a is the thermal diversity of the of the material in the solid and it's equal to lambda divided by rho c and if we look at the values here um, starting with if we put in x equal to zero the argument for uh, the rfc of the function is one we will also get the same value if t is equal to infinity and we put into the formula <coughs> we find that the temperature is equal to the new temperature the new uh, after this after, after this, the change uh, this is of course correct at the boundary because we forced it to be the new temperature at, at the boundary uh, but also for a very very long time after infinity we have reached a new temperature in the whole solid and error function the complementary error function is around 0.5 for the argument 0.5 that means that we have reached half the, the total change uh, at that when the argument is 0.5 and if we go to very deep into material or at the start uh, of the um, uh, the process uh, when we have t equal to zero in the denominator and or x equal to infinity deep down into the material we see that we have the starting temperature everywhere at that time we can find out that when the argument is 0.5 we roughly have half the change what happens into the material and this is a very important finding so we can say that the position of the heat front when we have had this half change of the, the total change we call it x 50 percent it's actually equal to square root of a times t and if we uh, manipulate the formula a bit we can say at a certain position x it takes t 50 percent time equal to x square divided by a when before we, we find it had to reach the 50 percent change an example here, uh, rho c is one, 10 up to minus, 10 up to 6, uh, lambda value 1, the thermal diffusivity 10 up to minus 6, starting temperature 10, the new temperature 20 degrees. And we know that the moving front in the simulation is like square root of, square root of a t. Uh, the time it takes for the front to reach 0.3 meters into the material using the formula is around 25 hours and more exactly 27.48 hours but roughly 25 hours so now we see a simulation of uh, how the temperature front is moving into this 50 percent front is moving into the material uh, on the on the vertical axis we have the temperature uh, we see uh, 
the temperature in the whole object is the blue line and the red front is moving forward this is the 50 percent change position and now the simulation has been 16 hours 17 hours and it soon reaches the point point three uh, the depth of 0.3 meters into the material and if everything is working correctly it should take around 25 or exactly 27 hours uh, you see it goes slower and slower it start in the beginning it goes quite fast and then it goes slower and slower and there we go 27 hours we have reached or as an approximation um, 25 hours um, we can also look at seasonal temperature temperature variations in the ground. We know that it's, we have a warm season and a cold season. Um, so the temperature in, in, at, the, at the ground surface is changing from winter to summer, back and forth, back and forth. And there are some simple rules for that as well, how deep this uh, disturbance goes down into the ground. Uh, and it's well, it, it's well known that the temperature is rather constant if we dig down into a well or into the caves of the in deep into the uh, the soil um, and the depth can be calculated in the same fashion as for the step change we just uh, analyzed we have we have this x 50 percent was equal to square root of 8t we can get a, a similar one like a 37 percent uh, reduction of the amplitude so the amplitude is 37 percent of what we have here this is the amplitude at the at the at the ground surface and down here at a certain depth x 37 percent the amplitude has been reduced to 37 percent of what we have up in the uh, at, at the ground surface uh, for regular soils it's two to four meters and we have this formula for x 37 so it's uh, thermal diversity times the um, time period and for these seasonal variation the time period is uh, one year we divide by pi and take square root of that and we get actually the penetration depth the periodic penetration depth for this type of variations now we look at the simulation of this periodic variation uh, on the left hand side we see the temperature and, and uh, uh, on, on the uh, horizontal axis is the depth into the ground for instance in this case and we see how the temperature in, in the in the ground is varying from summer to winter and now we're reaching the summer here the warm period here at the uh, summertime and we go down in fall and reaches uh, the winter periods here and it goes up and down like this here at the surfaces and we can see how the the propagation of the change is, is diminishing the deeper we go into the material. And we have some conclusions. We have established formula for the time scale for a body of fluid or solid with uniform time temperature, Tc, given by this formula. We have found that the thermal diffusivity is an important parameter for the propagation of heat and material. We found that we have a formula for the position of the temperature front due to step change at the surface of a thick wall. We also established a formula for the time it takes at a certain depth x to reach a 50% change. And penetration depth due to periodic variation of the thick wall or ground. Thank you.